everyone, I'm Zaina Allen and welcome back to Vote Life. You know, it's been, it's been wet. It's been wet here in the Big Apple. It seems like it's like, you know, 2020 has really been out for us, but we keep fighting her back. And, you know, that's that's all that's important. So we have a great show for you. Make sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below. We want to know what you think. You may recognize our first guest on the hit soap opera, The Young and the Restless. However, this woman has an extensive resume, and she is adding on to that list with her role in the new Will Packer BET Plus series, Bigger. Please welcome Angel Conwell. Hi, Angel. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing great. You know, making the most of, of this whole 2020 situation. Yeah, girl, because... I'm all right. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Look, I'm 2020, like I said, she's been trying to fight us, but we've been, we've been fighting back. That's all that yeah, matters. Oh yeah. We're fighting back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, but you got to fight for love. You got to fight for love. You're right. And then you know what 2020 is bringing us, though? Bigger. So can we talk about your character and the show? Yes, I play Veronica. I love Veronica. Uh, Veronica's really, she's all about her business. You know, uh, the creator, uh, the our showrunner likes to call her the truth teller. She tells the truth. She's going to give you, she ain't not going to give you the meat and potatoes and, like, the dessert. She's going to give you the veggies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And everybody doesn't always like the veggies, but right. you eat them because they're nutritious and they're and they're there for you. You know, so <laughs> I, I love playing Veronica. She's a real estate agent. And, you know, she she just puts her love life to the to the to the side, all to bring about that business aspect. And I and I can admire that about her. We love that. Now, you know, although this is a comedy, do you feel as though playing this role has taught you a little bit of something about yourself? Ooh, yeah. I mean, the thing about being an actor, I feel like we always find pieces of ourselves. Either, you know, we bring aspects of ourselves to the character, and then also, in turn, there's a treat, because sometimes you do learn a lot about yourself. And I, I noticed with Veronica that she likes to handle things on her own. Uh, she's, you know, she's very independent, which I think is, is respectable. But then, you know, we're here on this earth together, you know, and I feel like sometimes you need people. Sometimes people need people, and it's okay to need people. Yeah. And um, so I feel like she's, um, she's navigating through that, figuring all that out. And I can, I can, I, you know, I'm, I may be able to relate to that. <laughs> I may be able to relate to that. You know, sometimes it's easy to want to handle everything on your own so you don't have to be concerned about if anybody else is there for you or not. And, it, you know, but, you know, some, you know, sometimes you got to grow and, yep. and let people and let people be there for you. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, I, there's, there's several things um, about Veronica where I'm like, oh, OK, we parallel there. And I feel like we're similar in the in the fact that we like to be in control. But I feel like she likes to be in control of a lot of different aspects. I personally like to be in control of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important for me. And that's a, that's a job. Right. You know? But she likes to be in control of a lot more. So, but I do understand wanting to have full reign over your life. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little excited. Now that you've given me this description, I'm a little excited to see the show. Um, yeah. But, you know... Angel, I was first, I personally, was first introduced to you as a character on That's So Raven, as the bougie cousin Andrea. And I just want to let you know that that role has stuck with me, honestly. Um, I feel as though Andrea has sort of paved the way for my bouginess now. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so with your extensive list of characters that you've played, have you ever wondered about the impact your roles have had on other people and which of those roles was your favorite hmm. I don't have a favorite I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna do that that's just it's just too tough because I like so many I like different aspects and different things about different characters but I always try to just make sure that I'm representing the full aspects of being a black woman because we are so dynamic and we yes. have so much to offer we're not just one thing we never have been we 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 handle so much, but at the same time, we have vulnerabilities. We are we are comedic. We are witty. We are, you know, we're all we are strong. But you know, I also want to make sure people understand that we don't have to be strong all the time mm -hmm. because we're human. You know what I mean? I mean, I get it. We do come come off as something like a superhero because we kind of are. But we 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 do we have you know we have strengths and weaknesses. We're just we're we're everything, and so. You know, as I matured in this industry, it was very important 
to me to be able to play characters that represent all of those things and not just one aspect of being a black woman. Yes. Yeah. So. A, a word. Child, a word. <laughs> Look, I, I've enjoyed our time with you, with you. Thank you so much for joining us, Angel. Make sure you all stream bigger. September, when does it come out? September? It's out right now. It's streaming right now on oh, BET love Plus. That. Love created that. by Felicia Mary. Uh, Devon Shepard is our producer. Will Packer, of course. And we have such an amazing cast. So, yeah, I, I love the show. I'm, I'm a fan of the show. I can be very proud of yes. it. So I, I definitely hope you get to watch it. Bigger on BET, BET Plus. We're waiting to go back for our second season, but, you know. Corona. Corona. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to get all the attention and whatever. Right. But She's trying to steal everybody's shine. But, girl, we are looking forward to seeing you on Bigger. Thank you so much for joining us on Bold. Thank you. Have a good one. You Stay too. Safe. Rolling into more binge-worthy topics, our next guests are from HBO Max's Doom Patrol. Please welcome Karen Obalum and Abigail Shapiro. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hey. How are you guys, how are you guys doing? We, you know, we're stuck at home with the Rona keeping us in our houses. How are we doing? Uh, me and Rona, we we struggled at first, but me and Rona, we on a mutual agreement now. Mm -hmm. So I think we're good. I think we're good. How about you, Abigail? Yeah, I'm just, like, really, like, grateful to be in a good situation right now because I know, like, a lot of people are struggling and everything. But yeah. the Rona's been a little rough. Yeah. But... We'll all get through it. I'd have to agree. I have to agree. Now, yeah, you know... We have ups and downs. Yes, absolutely. Now, what I can say, one thing that has been getting me through... Um, all of this quarantining is my binging. I've been, I'm really a big fan of superhero movies and shows, right? But what I can say about Doom Patrol specifically is that there's something, something different about it. And I'm not yeah. trying to spoil anything for those at home, but what originally, I just, I just want to know, like, what originally attracted you guys to be a part of the show? You know, of course, other than the check, you know, what yeah. originally wanted you guys, why, why did you guys choose to be a part of the show? Oh, um, well, I just originally auditioned for the audition experience. I didn't actually expect to get the part, but I'm really happy that I did. Um, I love the show because it, it's so unique for a superhero show and just any TV show in general. It has all of these weird, weird, quirky moments that the show is really known for, but it also really delves deep into our humanity and explores the darker sides of what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. I'd have to agree. How about you, Karen? Um, same, honestly. Uh, I didn't really know about Doom Patrol. Like, I've seen the uh, the posters when I would drive by the studio, I'm like, oh, it looks interesting. I'm like, I'm, there's a robot, there's a woman, there's a black guy. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and then I got the audition, and I originally just started, I wanted to watch, like, two episodes, but then I ended up watching, like, the entire season because I have never seen anything like Doom Patrol on any platform. So I was like, this is, whether I get it or not, this, this, pro this show was extremely special and unique and weird just like me. So, I mean, I was hoping I got the role and uh, Ronnie's a badass. So, yeah. And then I got it. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, Karen, yeah. Karen, I think that your character, Ronnie, and your character, Dorothy Abigail, I think they have some similarities. And as I said, as I said to you earlier, um, I binged watched this show. So, yes, I'm an expert. Um, <laughs> I believe that they have some similarities. I think that they both consider themselves an outcast due to things that they had no control over. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, but yeah, and I also think that they both have this choice. They have to choose between good and evil. Um, and I actually find it funny that your characters don't necessarily cross paths. Um, so do you think that Dorothy and Ronnie may eventually find a friendship? Ooh, I don't know. That would be so cool if they did. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love to that work would be with so her. Cool. Like, oh, I feel I know, like I right? missed out. <laughs> I was, I was, like I said, I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised that, that you guys didn't cross any paths, especially given, like I said, that you guys kind of have, your characters kind of have similar, not, not too similar stories, yeah. but you guys, you guys are both battling yeah. something internally. I can say that. You know, I, I can understand that we don't see each other because Arani was originally supposed to help Vic get through a lot of things within himself. So I understand that, you know, she's in Detroit, they're in Detroit. And, but then when she went to the, you know, doomed Manor, um, she 
didn't trespass the doors. I was a little disappointed. <laughs> but you know what? Dorothy was off in space. So. <laughs> so I'm like, so you're just going to go to space? Right. Get, just, you're just going to go like, hop, like, in a, hop in a spaceship and go The one time, Dorothy's not there. <laughs> Donnie the shows up. Time, like, she's in freaking space. It's messed up. I don't think so, but hey, next season. Yes, yes. Now, I want to ask, what type of preparations did you both have to do, you know, to prepare for these complex characters? Karen, we can start with you. Um, so with Ronnie, she was actually originally supposed to have, like, a mastectomy oh. um, on her, well, I chose for it to be my left boob, because my right boob's my favorite. <laughs> um, and so I, re- I actually research that a lot and you know research women that have gone through that because it's like she's gone through a lot of traumatic stuff with her body and that's you know why they met in, in a PTSD meeting so I researched some of that too to, to know like what people are going through and actually fun fact uh, all of the the actors in the PTSD meeting are actual veterans oh wow so that was really amazing to uh, be a part of and talk to them about it and um, I couldn't imagine really going through that. So, you know, that's what acting is. You got to take from what you have experienced. And um, that's really all I could do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, it was really, really, um, it was really enlightening to a lot of things playing Ronnie. Yes. How about you, Abigail? What did you have to do to prepare to be Dorothy? Because Dorothy, child, Dorothy, who, for an 11 year old little girl, I was so angry with her <laughs> so many times. Lot. Whew. Yeah, yeah. About 111, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, what I did to prepare, I basically read the comics. I read the Grant Morrison comics and the Rachel Pollock comics. And um, I also watched a little bit of, like, The Wizard of Oz and other mm. renditions of The Wizard of Oz because Dorothy was initially based on Dorothy Gale from The Wizard of Oz. Um, so I did a lot of that. And I also did, like, a little bit of research on what happens to a child when they're like held hostage or locked away because Dorothy was like locked Mm. away for 90 years. Um, So her maturity and growing up has been stunted and she's emotionally Mm. in this place as she was when she was initially put away. Yeah. Um, So, Mm. and also since she's so young, I'm 20 and Dorothy's 11. So I play a lot younger than I actually am. And what I really did to do that. Thank you. Um, (laughs) What I did to do that, I basically tried to put myself in a child's mindset as much as I could. And when you're 11 years old, you don't really think you're a child because it's the oldest you've ever been at that point. And you think you're like, oh, I'm so old, et cetera. Um, so I, I put myself in that mindset and just let my inner child kind of run free. I love that. I love that preparation process for both of you guys, honestly. Um, now, I'm a little upset with the way season two ended. Um, I'm a little I, I'm a I little know. put off by it. So do we have any any news, anything you can give us about season three, if, if anything? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know things. I don't, I don't know, know anything. Oh uh, man, on. I'm just I, I'm really I just I need it. It so can't I just end like that. The reason why season two ended like that is because we weren't able to film the last episode or well, all of the last episode. So, really? Because the pandemic. Yeah. So that's why it was such a cliffhanger. No, it was um, like a but, like mm-hmm. such a cliffhanger. Like it was the ultimate. Ridiculous. Now, <laughs> you know, ladies. Don't blame us. Both of your characters have to make some hard decisions throughout the show. So we are going to play a little game of this or that Doom Patrol edition. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you guys two options, and then you choose which one. All right? Okay. All right. First question. Good or evil? <laughs> Karen, we yeah, can we start can't with say you. Both? No, you can't say both. Karen, we can start with you. I mean, good. If I'm gonna choose, it's gonna be good. I mean, you need both. So you, because without evil, there's no good. You mm-hmm. know? So kind of, you gotta, you gotta have something bad happen to allow people to express their good, the good inside of them. You know, when something bad happens, you see people get together the most. Yeah. So like Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, the explosion and the uh, that just happened, and people are coming together, donating, cleaning up the streets. 
So when bad happens, you see the good really come out of people. Oh, yes. But I'll say good. Good. All right. Abigail, good or evil? Um, good. I always want to choose good. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, like Karen was saying, there's always evil in everything. And from evil, you can really find good. I agree. I'd have to agree. All right. Next question. Cyborg or Cliff? We can start with Abigail. I think Karen, I think Karen has a little bias, so we can start with Abigail. Cyborg or Cliff? Oh my God, I'm so indecisive. <laughs> um, Choose uh, wisely, Abby. I would say hmm, maybe Cliff, because Cliff is kind of iconic and hilarious. All right, Karen. <laughs> cyborg or Cliff? You know, I. Javan would kill me if I didn't say cyborg. So cyborg, <laughs> Siron for the win. All right, That's and I last cyborg question. I love that. We're gonna ship it. We're gonna ship it. Siron, <laughs> Ronnie or Dorothy? What was it? Ronnie or Dorothy? Dorothy. Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> no, I mean I, I would love them both. Also um, say Ronnie. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say Dorothy, but I was like, she said Dorothy, I'm going to say Ronnie. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I love them both. But, you know, Ronnie, my girl, I got a soft spot for her. So we got we got a Ronnie on that one. Love that. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And we are excited to watch season three whenever that comes out. But when that com but until that comes out, make sure you all at home are streaming season one and two of Doom Patrol on HBO Max. Thank you so much, Lex. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. I've been trying to learn how to cook while I've been quarantined, and quite frankly, I've, I, I've been failing. I've been failing. But Bold TV correspondent Justin Crawford was able to get some tips from Bravo's top chef, All Stars LA, Nini Nguyen. Take a look. Here with me and right now, only Bravo top chef contestant and master chef, Nini Nguyen. From the top chef season 16, Kentucky, to the top chef, All Stars in Los Angeles, you have to tell me that you have not found anybody else who is as good as what she gets to do every single day, which is cook, bake, make fun things with food and drinks. So I'm so excited to bring you on to the show. But before we get started, Nini, do tell us what you think the best thing about being a chef is in your perspective. Um, I would say one of like my favorite thing about being a chef is feeding people and introducing people to different things that they might not necessarily have ever eaten and I've done that with a lot of my friends like I'm like you never had this you need to try this and I think that maybe it's like narcissistic of me to think like I want everyone to be like to introduce something to someone so that every time they eat it they think of me and so I think that's probably my favorite thing about being a chef is just like tormenting people and to eat new things, not like to torture them, and to um, make memories. I love that, Nini. That, I couldn't have asked for a better answer from you. That was perfect. <laughs> Again, thank you for being here. I'm gonna let you take the segment and our audience away with your easy to make summer dinner recipes for a cocktail, appetizer, and entree. Thank you for having me. I, um, I'm here to give you guys some really great tips on easy entertaining in the summer. I love having people around and during this time, you know, it's a little hard, um, but I don't like slaving away in the kitchen all day. And so here are some things that I really love to serve. And first and foremost, you always have to greet a, your guests with a cocktail. And so I wanna show you guys one of my favorite cocktails. And it's a take on a classic daiquiri. Um, so I have just plain white rum some fresh squeezed lime juice. You have to use the fresh, use the good stuff. And I made a simple syrup where I blended just a handful of Thai basil leaves. I blended it in a blender with some simple syrup, strained it, and it has this like very vibrant green um, color. And so we are going to make a cocktail. into our glass 
I think I only made enough for one, which is great because it's mine. And it's this really pretty green color you can greet your guests with, and it's nice and refreshing. Mm. And it's gonna go super well with our appetizer. I love to, you know, have cold appetizers just because you want to entertain, but you also want to have fun. You, you know, especially during this time, you're probably seeing your friends for the first time in a long time. And so you don't want to be working in the kitchen. I have these Vietnamese spring rolls that I love to make and they're gluten-free. You can adjust it any kind of way. You can have whatever meat, protein, or just vegetables if you like. And I really love eating like the colors of the rainbow. And today I'm stuffing them with um, some fresh mint, cilantro, cucumbers, um, red cabbage. I have some vermicelli noodles, which are rice noodles that are cold. You just boil them up and blanch them and then shock them in cold water. And I have some, um, I'm gonna show you a little close up, uh, lemongrass beef. And so I love grilling and if you can grill ahead of time, even better. And so I am gonna show you a really quick five ingredient um, marinade that I use all of the time and you can use it on both like chicken, pork, fish, um, beef, and tofu. I've been working really hard for like three minutes. Mmm. So it's so refreshing. It's crunchy. I'm talking with my mouth full. But I think this is a great crowd pleaser. <laughs> I feel like while we've all been in quarantine, we've been trying to make the best out of the celebrations we would have normally hosted. Well, our next guest is here to talk to us about her company that helps you have your quarantine parties and still have a great time. Please welcome Shanna Israel. Hi, Shanna. Hi, how are you? I'm awesome, I'm awesome. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes, so Shanna, could you tell us a little bit about Art Fun Parties? Sure. So, well, first off, I, I started Art Fun Parties to really be an in-person event for kids specifically and uh, really trying to create a fun platform for kids. And then the pandemic hit and we had stayed home orders. So I was uh, in a bind because at that point I was about to launch the company. So it was really a choice to either, you know, dissolve the company or come up with some really creative solutions while we were sitting at home. And as I saw uh, Zoom takeover and everyone kind of living in this box um, box mentality, you know, visually and just, you know, kind of mentally, I really thought to myself, how can we make an experience like no other and really be creative within a pandemic? And so Art Fun Parties evolved and the experiences that you find now are a little bit of mixture of still that human connection that we all need and then uh, adding some virtual reality and then also adding some fantasy components. So it was really important for me to create an experience, to still celebrate life, still have fun, involve some artistic elements and really, uh, you know, to 
go beyond the challenges that we were all dealing with at that current time and still dealing with today. Yes, yes. Now, I know you mentioned it a little bit, but what initially made you decide to launch this? So after after going through knowing that I wasn't going to be able to do in, per, in party, like in person parties, I decided to do all virtual because it still could be done. I was looking at Instagram during that time and I saw Vogue and all these different companies doing online photos. So I uh, happened to be friends with uh, Andy Bernstein, who is a big photographer, iconic sports photographer. And I thought to myself, how cool would it be to have an online experience for a kid in pandemic or outside of pandemic to live their sports dream and make it come true. And so the first experience that we created together was an online virtual photo shoot where not only can you have a one-on-one -on -one experience with Andy taking, you know, get, getting your photo taken like a professional athlete, but then we go into post-production and take you into and build you into a 3D virtual court like you're an NBA superstar. And then uh, you can actually get your photo uh, printed and everything's done at home. And so it's really a unique uh, experience that really lets you go beyond the limitation of Zoom and that kind of boxed in, you know, virtual conversation that everyone's doing right now. Yes, I think that's... Exciting. Yeah, let's say that's so cool. Um, I th I, that's so interesting. I wish I look. My birthday's coming up, so um, maybe we can talk we can later. Talk about it. We can chat later about this. You know, September thirtieth. If anybody wanted to know. Um, so let's talk about this this contest that our fun parties is having. Could you tell us a little bit more how we can, how can we get involved? I might have to enter myself because, like I said, my birthday's coming up, so I have to make sure I you know be a part of this. So let us know a little bit about it. Sure. So the contest, you can find information about it on artfunparties.com. There's a contest uh, tab where you can go and find the directions. But basically, what you need to do is go on Instagram specifically, like the page, like the post, and enter into your friends. And then I'm going to pick uh, a lucky winner. And then from there, once we pick the winner, you'll be able to uh, have an online experience with Andy and a virtual basketball photo shoot. So your sports dream will come true. <laughs> yeah, I need that. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> so, um, you know, now that outside is starting to open up a little bit more, how does Art Fun, plan Art Fun Parties plan on adjusting to the current climate? Well, we're going to maintain virtual for, I, I personally think virtual is the, is the long road ahead. So I'm going to stay virtual as the, the bulk of the business. We might do some in-person uh, you know, experiences here or there, but the majority of the business will stay virtual. And I, I, I like that concept for a lot of reasons because it will keep the cost down and then also doesn't limit by location. If somebody's overseas and wants to do this experience, they can. And so it offers a lot more um, ability to participate. And that's something that's important for me. So yeah, it's it's mostly going to remain virtual. All right, and I love that. I think that we should still keep the. Vir I think what I've learned while we've all, what we've all learned while we've been in quarantine is that we can do this virtual thing. Like it's not impossible anymore. It was never like maybe I could do, maybe not. I think we're all able to do it. So I love that. So thank you so much for joining us, Shanna. And make sure everybody go ahead and you know enter into the competition because now you have some real competition here because I'm going <laughs> to enter like five times. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me today. Yes, thank you for joining us. Now, I don't know about you all, but I love jewelries and accessories. Like, that's my that's my thing, okay? And I also love to support Black-owned businesses. And our next guest collides both of these worlds for me, and I love it. So please welcome owner of Bedazzling Accessories, Velvet Lattimore. Hi, Velvet. Hi. How, How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome, awesome. So I want to ask you, when did you start Bedazzling Accessories? Well, I started in, like in 2007, but I was sort of like a third-party seller, like on eBay, just reselling things on Etsy and eBay, like on platforms. Mm -hmm. And then um, once business started to take off, because I was just doing it as like a part-time, kind of like just get money for college and things like that. Um, and then when things started to change and um, I realized there was a need for what I was doing. I opened up a boutique in Brooklyn mm -hmm. um, in 2011. So since 2011, officially on the books as a like real business. Awesome, awesome. So what inspired you to only sell pieces made by women of color? Well, I felt like at the time um, there was no uniqueness, like there was no, no way to di differentiate between what I was doing by just reselling jewelry 
Um, Macy's does it, you know, Marshall's and all those other stores do it. And I had so many friends that were um, accessory designers and they had no opportunity. And I said, well, I have a boutique. Why don't you put all your stuff in my store? Mm. It was a way of supporting my friends and kind of having like a haven for all of my friends that are designers. And then it just kept going and people, I realized that there was like not a lot of spaces for designers of color. So if you go to most boutiques that are like small boutiques in Soho or like in the Lower East Side, they mostly have just the bigger brands and they're they're not people of color. And right. so it's like most people can't get into those stores because they're not, they're independent small designers and they don't have a chance and opportunity. So I felt like what I needed was really new and unique at the time. Mm. Now everybody's doing it, but when I was doing it, I was before the wave of the whole buy black thing. and yeah. You know, that's going on. And I love that, though. I love that you were like, you had this, yeah, you were like, yeah. when all this came about, you were like, Psh, I've been doing that. I was doing that already. Like, <laughs> I mean, because it was a need. It, it right. still is a need, but it wasn't as highlighted as it was back in 2011 as it is now with all that's going on in the world. But back then, people was just sort of like, oh, okay, so what's, so like a lot of my products are very unique. They're handmade. And then there's an actual story behind the person who's making it. You can reach out to the person who's making it. It's way different than if you go to a big department store and there's no way to actually know the story behind the person who's making it. Right. I love that. I love this. I, I love this. Oh. So how do you see Bedazzling Accessories expanding in the future? Well, I'm currently online and um, I would like to be international. Mm -hmm. I would love for um, to gain more clientele from people overseas because, again, there's a way for people to see handmade designs in Europe, in Africa, everywhere. So it shouldn't just be a... Because right now I'm pretty much local, went throughout the tri-state area and also like California and maybe mm -hmm. Midwest. Some of my clients come from there. But I would love to be you know known overseas and stuff well, i would love that for you yes i would love that for you so let it let the people know where they can find you online well it's v dazzling v is in victor e d a z z l i n g accessories um dot com i'm also on twitter as v dazzling instagram v dazzling facebook v dazzling accessories linkedin um, and you can Google me. So Google I'm also me. on Google Plus. So you can Google me, Google V-Dazzling Accessories, and you'll find all of my designs and my hand, pa my hand um, crafted pieces are online too. I love that. I love that. Well, make sure everybody at home go ahead and check out V-Dazzling. I, I love it. She had some earrings. She can't wear them, but she had some earrings that were great. They're huge, like big. I'm a fan. I'm a sucker for big earrings. So anyway, go ahead and check out the dazzling. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yes, yes. Okay. And that's the end of today's show. Thank you for watching. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Get our Amazon Fire TV app. Watch us on IG Live. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And stay tuned for my bold life in two weeks. See you guys.